Hi there everyone, welcome to today's live. A quick weather report, it's actually warming up. We're nearly in mid-May and finally here in Yorkshire it's warming up. We've got lovely sun, a uh, bit of a breeze today, uh, but it's a great day and everything's going to really start growing now. So today we're going to talk about some really great news. We've got some kestrel chicks already, so I'm just going to take you through that process. So this is the first chick uh, we're going to see revealed hatching. This was uh, a magic moment for us and everyone that's viewing the live feed. Just a little glimpse here of uh, one of the chicks freshly hatched and they're quite pink at this stage, but a stunning little uh, glimpse there. And that's absolutely fabulous for us to see here. Uh, we really get attached to these animals that we're watching as to all the viewers on the live stream. But look at that little tiny kestrel still wet just uh, that's its back it's almost upside down there it gets itself sorted out but that's literally just come out of an egg so that's absolutely brilliant we're able to watch these uh, magic moments live and then obviously be able to recap them uh, with you now just stunning and I love the way she shuffles down onto the eggs and the chicks keeping them nice and warm yeah, a little magic moment. But with this nest, we've had quite a few dramas. So this was a jackdaw attack. So we got down in the morning just before seven o'clock. And this is what we saw on camera. An absolute battle here with a jackdaw. And uh, just quite incredible. That's obviously been an ordeal for the kestrel that's gone on for some time. Her eggs are completely scattered in the nest there, which is a real shame at that stage. And if you want to learn more about that, we'll put the description of the video about how she got on uh, with this particular instance and how I had to intervene and help them out. Uh, and I'm pleased I did because those eggs simply wouldn't have got incubated properly. They're half buried, they spread around and the female kestrel didn't gather them back up and reform a nest scrape. It's very difficult for her to sort that out because there's no nest scrape there anymore. Uh, so I had to intervene. But if you want to watch the video, we'll put it up on the suggestions of what to watch next. But it's quite a dramatic story. So this is the second chick. So it was quite remarkable to have any of these chicks hatching after that because the jackdaw ordeal span almost three hours um, before she got settled down back onto the nest. And three of those eggs were very cold uh, when I rearranged them. So I'm really pleased to see that we've now got two chicks and uh, every chick that comes out, you know, we're almost cheering here because, uh, you know, she did go through quite an ordeal with the jackdaws. Uh, throughout incubation, but especially that moment uh, that she had. And this is the first feed. We've got one little chick there, just a matter of hours old. And the other one is really fresh out of the nest, uh, out of the uh, egg there. Look at that, stunning. It's already begging for food there. And you can see the empty eggshells. Uh, but this is their first little feeds. And they're tiny, these little chicks. Um, and see how care careful she is now with her feet. Uh, she clenches her tunnel, talons uh, in and then she gets shuffled down back on these eggs. A little bit confusing because we've got an empty egg shell here. And what's she going to do with that? She's going to eat it. So she regains some of the nutrients uh, from the egg shell. Uh, so sometimes they carry the egg shells away. Sometimes they get discarded. And other times they do this, they actually eat the egg shell. So that's another little magic moment we've captured there with the cameras so this is a good one i mean there's always uh, a bit of fun along the way the uh, the male kestrel is going straight in with a mouse here taking it in this is a wood mouse and uh, yeah you can tell he's a bloke he's trod all over the chicks he doesn't really know what to do uh, he's like looking back for the female but he comes back in and there you go he's just popping the mouse on top of them and this is just hilarious uh yeah he's a typical bloke look at him don't really know what to do with these young chicks so i think so oh, well, i'll just head out and leave them with that mouse on top of them so this is just you know these little magic moments that are quite amusing so thankfully the female came back in and sorted the mouse out and fed the chicks again but later that evening we had some more dramas and this is something we really don't want to see so we've got a female barn owl here entering the nest. We think this is Willow. And what she's wanting to do is to take that nest site over. And you can see she's grabbing the female kestrel. 
sending the eggs scattering again and the chicks. These chicks are tiny, very vulnerable at this stage. And uh, luckily Mrs. Kez wins that battle and pushes the owl out. But this, these moments are so uh, dramatic, so tense for us watching. But that happened, but the really crazy thing is, 20 minutes later this happens again. The same barn owl goes in and has a go at the female kestrel yet again. Here she comes, it's just gone dark now and she's going in, but the female kestrel, she's made some good moves here. She's got hold of the barn owl's feet, both of her feet, so she's disabled that barn owl. And no matter how hard the barn owl struggles, that kestrel has got hold of her really tight and uh, she evicts that barn owl yet again. So this is really dramatic. So the female barn owl is just simply looking for a nest site and trying to push the kestrel out. We've got the chicks a little bit scattered there which the female kestrel sees that and she gathers those chicks back up underneath herself. And then we've got an egg to one side and luckily she spots that as well and gets that tucked underneath her now, I think. Look at that. Yeah. So not long afterwards, she's got her nest back in order and then she had a peaceful night after that. But what, a, I mean, it's just incredible to see moments like that. And thankfully this morning we woke up to another great scene. We've got a third chick hatching. And this hatched just after five o'clock this morning, 5.15. Uh, we've got another chick hatching out there. By the time we were up and uh, looking at the cameras this morning, the chick was all pristine, beautifully dry. Uh, but this is uh, that chick with uh, fairly freshly hatched. So that's absolutely great. So we've got three chicks now. Uh, we're obviously hoping for more, uh, but we'll just have to see because those eggs, three of them were quite cold when the jackdaw attacked. But these are these chicks getting another little feed here. Look at those, they're absolutely gorgeous. So this is a vole, I think. Yeah, it looks like a vole that she's feeding them. So Mr. Kez would have gone out and caught that this morning or he would have had it in his stash. Um, they do stash food around in hedgerows, under tree stumps, in different areas. I've seen them doing it here. And they're getting another little feed. Look at that, absolute magic. So that's absolutely great. We've got the third chick hatched out, so that's brilliant. I'm going to take some questions now. So the first question comes from Sue R. She's asking about the egg tooth and what happens after mm -hmm. the egg uh, hatches. Yes, yeah, so the egg tooth is uh, on the curve of the beak. You can just see it uh, uh, on the video if you look back. But on the curve of the beak, there's a little, uh, little almost like little horn on the end of the beak. And that's used to help chip the way out of the egg. And uh, as the chick develops, uh, the beak gets harder and the egg tooth doesn't develop and simply I think it just drops off after a few days uh, as the chick develops. Uh, we've got a question here from Dagmar. Stork babies are storklets. <laughs> what do you call kestrel babies? <laughs> oh, let's think about it. Little keslins, I think, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Right, got a question about the uh, kestrels feeding their young. So mm -hmm. somebody's noticed that they seem to be feeding one of the chicks more than the others at the moment. Is mm -hmm. that normal? And what's the kind of normal way that they'll feed the babies? Yeah, so during this sort of process, we've got uh, chicks hatching at different stages. And the yolk with inside uh, the egg, obviously, that actually becomes food for the chick. So that's stored in the sort of tummy area. Um, if anyone sees a dead day old chicken or something, there's a big yolk sac stored within the uh, chick itself and that sustains uh, the chick depending on the species for the first day or two days sometimes even three days for the bigger birds and that sustains the uh, chick uh, for that period you imagine something like a duck she's got to sit there wait for all the chicks to hatch before they can go off and feed uh, and they have to go out and feed the mother doesn't bring them food back uh, but with kestrels uh, they obviously stay in the nest so she's feeding uh, the chicks. Um, there's no deliberate purpose. She can't probably tell which one's the newest unless they're very new. Um, but she's feeding the chicks that are crying out uh, for food the most. But kestrels in general are probably, I find them brilliant to watch because it's all very, very orderly. And another few days when we've got the chicks hatched, it's all really orderly that we've got uh, the female kestrel almost like rows them up and she's feeding them all really fairly. Uh, so they are really good for that. Whereas uh, sometimes the barn owls, uh, they're not the best of parents and they just are feeding the one that's shouting out the most. And uh, there's a lot of stages 
um, you know, like a staggered hatching so we can sometimes have chicks that are uh, a great deal of distance in age between uh, each other, say for Ban, I'll lay seven, seven eggs uh, nearly just over every other day. You've then got 14 days difference in between them. So you can have a little baby barn owl coming out this size and then sat next to it is one, you know, almost fist size uh, sat next to it. So uh, that's when, you know, things can go slightly wrong. Uh, but with kestrels, they're brilliant parents as you, you've seen how she defends that nest, defending the eggs and now the chicks. And uh, she'll look after however many chicks she ends up with, she'll look after them brilliantly. Maisie Gregory is asking, what will happen with the three remaining eggs if they don't hatch? She was remembering that the three the mm -hmm. three in the clutch seemed quite cold when you had to intervene. Yeah, yeah, so th those eggs um, will, will be completely uh, left in there. The only thing that slightly worries me sometimes, if those eggs are infertile, they go rotten inside. And uh, if anyone's held rotten eggs before, they can be quite volatile and they can actually crack open or uh, even sometimes explode if they're moved around uh, and we definitely don't want any adult eggs exploding on these little chicks that won't happen for quite a while now and if they do um, sometimes we've just left eggs in there for the whole time and other times uh, you know if there's a camera that needs cleaning when these chicks are much bigger um, they need to be at least two weeks old before I would go near that nest unless there was another emergency like jackdaws um, in there um, you know and then we could maybe take them out there if we do a camera clean but that's that's uh, weeks away at this stage uh, at least two weeks away before we'd even think of that we've still got our fingers crossed that they will hatch yeah let's let's I mean it, it would be brilliant if they do hatch and uh, we're obviously hoping they do hatch but we had a three hour three hour period that morning where we where we had issues with the jackdaws and we didn't know what happened beforehand because we had a power cut here and uh, switched the computers and cameras back on and that's what we got greeted with was the the female kestrel locked uh, in embrace with the uh, jackdaw. Um, Colin C is asking how long of a difference were the eggs hatched so are, are, over what period are we expecting? So where are we now? Thursday, Wednesday, they hatched, started hatching on Wednesday. So we're looking, um, if we haven't got any, uh, you know, eggs completely hatched by Sunday, that will be it. Uh, so we're looking, we're looking at today and we're looking at tomorrow and possibly into Saturday uh, to see who's going to hatch. And if we get into Sunday, if another one hatches on Sunday, it'll be a miracle, I think. So that's all the questions we've got time for today. All right, well, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week and just really enjoy watching these kestrels. Uh, cheers then. Bye-bye.